Hey guys, thanks for tuning us in for this 65th episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Special guests for this episode include Freddie Salem from the Southern rock band The Outlaws, country duo Smith and Wesley. We'll also visit from The Voice, you might remember him, Cody Ballou got a brand new Christmas single, Hang Your Hat on My Christmas Tree. If you would, please take the time to subscribe, drop a like, comment, leave some feedback, and of course share with your friends. Our first guest, you might remember him as the guitarist from the southern rock band The Outlaws, Freddie Salem, going to be talking about a brand new CD-DVD release. Freddie, great to visit with you, my friend. Oh, good to visit with you, Cameron. Yeah, I appreciate the time, and uh, um, I hope everybody's up uh, on the Midwest and East Coast, and I'm I'm getting there in Los Angeles here. It's pretty early, so. There you go. Now, now, when was the original idea to to re-release the the performance from 1981? I mean, how how long has this been a process, a, a thought process for you guys? Well, I've got to tell you, Cameron, uh, this this whole thing took about a year to bring to fruition, and uh, um, I was contacted by uh, Bern Ramian uh, at MIG Corporation out of Hanover. And uh, regarding the Rock Palace uh, release, and uh, it took me about a year to get it together, uh, try to reach this person, that person, so on and so forth. Uh, There were contractual things, there was processing things as far as the sound and the visual, because it was recorded uh, in 1981. So uh, about a year later, it finally came out. It's been out about six weeks now, I would assume. And it's selling through pretty well. Um, uh, so that was it. Rock Palace is the entity. They've done thousands and thousands of live concerts. Uh, and um, a wonderful company, along with MIG. So came out, and we put it together, and I did the liner notes and compiled the photos and this and that and uh, the entire process, and finally it launched. And it's a beautiful package. It's a DVD and a CD as well, uh, so uh, uh, nice. It's very nice. And and of course, folks know the the Ghost Riders in the Sky. But I, I tell you, the, the the green grass and high tides. You guys just you, you guys uh, threw the kitchen sink and everything on that performance, didn't you? I mean, how cool was that? I mean, you think about a twenty minute long song. I mean, how much fun was that jam out? Oh. Uh, every night, uh, that song, it would vary from <laughs> 18 minutes to 24 minutes. And, uh, uh, we would of course play off the crowd. And, uh, that's why you're there. You're performing for the crowd, the paying customers and the fans. And, uh, that one just came in just under the, the live album version, which was 20 over 22 minutes long, I think. Uh, but, but, uh, yeah, it, it was exciting, uh, uh, to, uh, to do that show and present that song along with Ghost Riders, especially back to back. Ghost Riders was our finisher and encore. So by then the crowd was completely uh, obliterated, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and the the response was always real favorable. And uh, uh, we had a great time uh, on that show. It came off well. Those songs came off well. And Freddie, for you, the uh, the the expanse of the of the career, rocking out, and the the, the friends in the industry. Uh, unfortunately, it, it seems like we've all endured some loss this year. And I know that uh, Charlie Daniels Band was uh, was one of your uh, f- your groups that uh, that you guys hung out with. But how cool is it to be able to put some smiles on folks' faces with some with some memories back to 1981, like this one? Oh, that's wonderful, and. Uh... The response has been wonderful as well for that tenure of the Outlaws, uh, which was a turbo-driven ve- velocity band. Uh, uh, we had uh, come out of uh, the Hurry Sundown album. Uh, then I joined, and then um, I brought a little harder edge to the band, and we became a full-fledged uh, concert band. Uh, and uh, by then... Uh, of course, uh, that had taken place, and 
uh, but all, but all the southern rockers, uh, just a you know, just a shame that everybody's gone, uh, uh, in, including uh, my partners in the Outlaws, Billy Billy Jones and Huey Thomason, and uh, I wish they were around to share in this whole situation. There's only two of us uh, left that are sharing, and that's the drummer David Dix and myself. And Justin Jones, uh, who is Billy Jones' son, uh, and uh, who never knew his father. Uh, he, uh, but uh, anyways, uh, a kind of a celebration for the three of us, anyway, to see this come out again and and see that what the response is. You never know, you know, you never know what's happening. So. That's right. And again, uh, live at Rock Palace 1981. Uh, be sure and check it out. And and I want to make sure and and Freddie give you a chance to let folks know where they can where they can find the music and and also keep up with everything social media wise as well. Well, right. Uh, uh, Amazon is probably your best place to purchase uh, the product. It's uh, top five Amazon in Europe right now, and uh, also in this country, it's moving up. And uh, also, MIG Corporation, uh, which, uh, you know, is out of Hanover, Germany. You can purchase it on there. And uh, across the board, the pricing's about the same for the, for the package. So, uh, and as far as the social media goes, uh, you can go to Facebook, and uh, it's uh, Freddie Salem. There's three different uh, pages for me. Thanks to my social media manager. So thanks a lot. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, Facebook, and that's about that's about it. And uh, if you want my website, it's freddie-salem.com. There's updates on there as well. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to spending some more time with this one uh, over the coming week. Live at Rock Palace 1981 from the Outlaws, Freddie Salem. And Freddie, it has truly been a privilege to have the chance to visit with you, my friend. And uh, hopefully we can catch up again real soon. Have a happy holiday season. You too, brother. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, guys, our next guests on the podcast, uh, we've been playing uh, playing some of their tunes for a bit. We got Smith and Wesley uh, via Zoom. I, I, I'm so used to saying on the line, you know, us, uh, us radio guys. But uh, Zoom, having a chance to visit with you guys, and uh, thank you for your time. You oh, bet. yeah. It's great to be here. Well, uh, Todd, you, you said you were you were late for a moment, but uh, you come across one of those Facebook videos. That happens to all of us. That happens yeah, to all of us. Down, you go down that rabbit hole sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> now, now the the, uh, the the latest single, "The Land of Y'all," off of the album and all that. Uh, how blown away are you by the the growing following that you guys have? Well, pretty much. I think at first, you know, Todd and I, we just, we love, you know, writing and singing country music. So, uh, you know, when we put out singles, of course, we go through a process with our label and managers and the promoters and all of that. And, uh, you know, to us, the song was just about living in the South and that's about what it was. But, you know, of course, you, 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 know, you go down that rabbit hole, as Todd <laughs> says, and people start saying, well, I don't know, you think this is going to offend somebody? And I said, well, I don't know why it offends somebody. We're just talking about you know you know life in the south and that's about it and so uh they kind of put in our mind well i don't know is there you know is this is this gonna you know offend some people but evidently it's worked out great the, the single is doing good and uh you know we're proud for the the riders you know bernie nelson and all too and uh couldn't be more proud of it and the way i look at it is you know if blake shelton says y'all then it's okay <laughs> to say and and so i mean it really is more just south i mean texas oklahoma every you know, y'all folks in Oklahoma say it. So, you know, it's, it's just really about a, a way of life. I'm not necessarily being from the South, just where you are. Now, let our listeners who have never met you guys before, where did uh, where did Smith and Wesley first get together? I mean, how did you guys first meet? And uh, how long did it take to know that music was, was, a, was a common thread for you guys? Well, you know, Todd started, I guess, uh, formally, 
uh, in the music business before I did. I, I played music before Todd did. I think, you know, I used to send him b- before the, before everything got out on the internet that you could pull. I would draw strings and, and put little dots and, and teach, teach him the chords. Uh, and then he took off with it and had his own deal with a group called Herringbone and then had an artist development deal. And, and so uh, I always played bluegrass. But then I put a band together called Brody Johnson Band. And it was my band, and, and Todd got to where he would come into town. Our dad was just starting to get in some bad hell, so Todd would come in to see Dad, and, and then, you know, I said, well, hey, why, you're here. Why don't you, we're playing over so-and-so, come jump up and sing with us. And just immediately, everybody was like, well, wow, you know, are y- y'all that brother Harmony and family Harmony, and plus Dad would start coming out. It got him to, you know, have something to do. And, uh, and so from that point, everybody, uh, we – uh, put out an album in Nashville. We were going to do it on our own as Brody Johnson band. And before we ever got the album out, we got a, we played a show with Alan Jackson down in Atlanta uh, for a governor deals inauguration. And right after that show is when we got approached by a label and they said, man, who are you guys? You know, you guys are great. And a brother duo. And, and uh, let me, you know, let me sign you. And once you pull that album and let's re-release it, but you guys need to change your name. You need to be a duo. And so that show was the last show our dad ever saw us play. He passed away two weeks after that. And so his name was Wes Smith, and we decided to name the band Smith and Wesley because uh, Todd's the oldest son, so he got the family name. He's Todd Wesley Smith and his son and our grandfather and and all that. So uh, that's kind of where Smith and Wesley came from, and Todd and I officially formed, you know, the group Smith and Wesley, and now we're on our third album. Now, how hard is it for, for, for brothers to work together? I mean, uh, h- how many knockdown drag outs have you guys had over the years? I mean, what was it? Was that a, a hard thing to come together with, I guess? Not really. We lived out in the country, so we, we didn't have any neighbors. You know, the, the cows don't really talk to you and the horses don't really talk to you as much. So uh, Todd <laughs> and I had to become best friends. And uh, if we were going to have any interaction with human beings, we had to learn real quick that, you know, we were brothers. And I think that kind of made the blood run thick. We uh, later wound up going to the same college, Georgia Southern University, which Luke Bryan, Cole Swindell, and, and uh, roomed together. We're in the same fraternity, ran the same fraternity <laughs> as officers together. And uh, so we've, we've been pretty much, you know, best friends as much as brothers throughout the whole process. And I, I would describe it more. I think we kind of know each other pretty well since we spent so much time that it's easy, to, easy to discern when one of us is venting to the other one, then take it personal. And, and you know, and you got to have that outlet. And so, uh, Todd, I guess what you call is real speak. So you can't wear your feelings on your you know, your, your shoulder too much. And, uh, I think it's worked well, but that's my story. Todd may tell you a different <laughs> story. But. Yeah, no, it, that's, that's, that's about it. That's about it. Now, who was the, the, the one that first instilled music into the two of you? Our mom. Yeah. She, uh, so she's, she played piano. And so she cut a deal with our dad when we were, when we were growing, first growing up is, we wanted to play sports and the only way she would let us play sports is if we took up piano lessons. And that was a deal she cut with our dad, not us, our dad. And so, and so we, that's how we came to play piano because we wanted to play sports originally. Yeah. I I know how that goes. Uh, I lived in a house where, you know, you get the approval from dad. It doesn't matter what the kids say. Right. (laughs) I don't know how uh, our piano teacher was actually the organ player at our church, Beth Foster. And I don't know how she did it, me coming straight from football practice to piano practice. I mean, I might have thrown on a dry shirt, but uh, yeah, I imagine it wasn't fun for her sometimes. Now, what's the what's the writing process like for for the two of you guys? Well, um, I guess Todd and I both write. Uh, The easy ones are when we're on radio tour. Uh, you know, going a week, sometimes we spend a week going around on radio tour when we used to go on radio. Yeah, tours. I know, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you're sitting on a bus. I guess you can either play Xbox or Xbox or you can you know, watch TV or what we did. We pull out the guitars and say, what about this idea? <laughs> so, you know, some of the songs we've written, we've actually written on the bus. Um, the other ones, <clears throat> it's more of a collaboration. Of course, Todd's written some on his own. I've written some on my own. And then sometimes, you know, when we uh, if the song just doesn't come right out, we'll send it and say, hey, what do you think about this? It's gone for everywhere from Todd's basically had a song written in words and sent it to me and said, you know, hey, can you, you know, maybe you, you know, maybe you put the music to this and, and 
you know, will you look at this and, hey, I need a bridge or so we've just kind of collaborated, uh, you know, throughout the process. And it seems to have worked real well, um, you know. I guess the interesting part is that uh, everybody would guess is when it gets when it gets to the time to release a single. <clears throat> that's some fun conversations where, you know, well, hey, I like this song. Wait, did you write that song? <laughs> <Yeah>. OK, <laughs> you know, but it's it's truly we have more people involved in picking singles that kind of work through the issue of, OK, well, uh, but, you know. I guess the first two albums, you know, we used to write all of our songs. We've written every one of them with maybe exception of maybe one on each album that we either wrote or co-wrote with somebody. And then this last album was the first time that we actually took songs from some writers in Nashville and, and said, let's just make a great album. And not that, not that we didn't have songs, but we just really wanted to put forth an album that every single, every single on the album could be released to radio. And I think, you know, in our minds, at least we've accomplished that goal that we've got a whole album where, you know, a lot of the folks in Nashville say literally every song on this album. And the tough part is when you have to pick one for the next single. Yeah. Well, and too, it, it's, you know, when we started out first going to country radio seminar uh, in February of every year at CRS, when you first come in, people were like, you're Smith and Wesson? Who are you? And then, and now, <laughs> you know, so this is our third album. And looking through, they know who we are. You've got, and, and now you've got songwriters who now are willing. I mean, when you, as a songwriter, that, that's, that's all you do. You're very peculiar about which independent artists you give your song to. Are they going to be played on the radio? And 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 Scott and I, uh, Smith and Wesley, we're pretty. We as soon as one single's done, we're putting another one on it. And so, and because we're independent, we don't have the, we don't have to say, okay, you got three songs from this album, then you're doing a new album. No, if the songs are good, we'll like this upcoming, like the last one. Uh, and so we were fortunate that Bernie and, 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 and Jacob just knew that they were willing to give us some of their songs and heard our songs in the past. So then that's for us, that that's uh, feels good when a songwriter is willing to do that for you. That's, that's good stuff. And, and speaking of Bernie, he's actually going to be on uh, on the podcast. I believe next week he's going to be on with us. Yeah. So so he's Bernie's got uh, a few songs on this this new album, Dreams from Landy Y'all. Now, who is who's maybe the biggest uh, inspiration or maybe motivation uh, for you, especially with what 2020 has been? Uh, Scott, ask you first. The mot- the motivation for 2020. Yeah. Who's who's been your motivation in spite of 2020, I guess? <clears throat> I guess it would have to be family members, uh, you know, and, and pick any of them, you know, your wife, your kids, your uh, mom, your, your brother. Uh, and and really close friends uh, because you know this is this is this is a strange time and you know and if I'm not one to just kind of quarantine by myself I would go absolutely nuts. The only way I could quarantine is if it was in a tree stand for <laughs> literally you know all, every day all day long for uh, you know a month or whatever you want to do. But uh, I, I think it has to be family members that would that would probably you know of course above all that. You know, it's probably uh, it's, it's God. I mean, you know, without faith through all this, you know, you're not going to you can't do it alone. And so I would say faith and family. And Todd? Well, yeah, well, it's, it's got pretty well hit all, all of all. Of it. But there is one thing. And and for me, it's right in this past February at CRS, we got the Independent Artist of the Year Award. And and so from I mean, that's that's not just a. A, a, a beauty pageant type award that that is if as an independent that means you had more spins on radio for the previous year than any other independent country artist and for me i look at that in february and say well that didn't just happen we you know and so you know we continue putting songs on the radio we can, we may not be able to tour to support the songs but we do things like, you know, talking to you through, through uh, phone calls or Zoom calls or, or those kind of things. But it's it's just the realization that when we do get back to touring and get back to playing for people, that just, that just didn't happen. That's still there. We still have that ability and we still have that going on. So that's something I look to to just say, okay, you know, let's keep it on. So. That's right. Well, Pardon me. Uh, if folks want to keep up with uh, not only the, the latest single, uh, the, the entire album, upcoming tour dates and all that, What's where's the best place uh, to, to get all that stuff, guys? 
Yeah, you can go to smithandwesley.com, and for there, from there you can hit all our socials, where it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you can go see all the videos that go with the songs. Uh, you can see a photo album from all the places we played. Uh, up until, I guess, our last shows, you can see they have another section for fans where they can go get their pictures downloaded for when they take with us there. So, but smithandwesley.com. All right. Well, uh, Scott and uh, Todd, it's been great to, to get the chance to visit with you remotely. However, we have to do it. That's uh, we've had to change things up a little bit. But uh, thank you guys for your time. And uh, hopefully after this is all uh, over and done, we'll see each other face to face. Absolutely. Well, I, I hope so. We look forward to it. You know, we miss the fans and we miss you guys. We miss I think. Ty, the last time we came from Oklahoma on a radio tour, we drove it back was, in the snow. <laughs> it was snowing when we came back. On the, well, and that's when we wrote uh, uh, Little Things, I think, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. yeah that's, we wrote well, that on the way back. On this but album, we miss uh, the fans, and we miss you yeah. guys. Yeah. So we, we've got a couple songs on this song we've written on the, on the bus, too. So we'll check them out on Greetings from the Land of Y'all. All right. Well, uh, Todd and Scott, thank you guys so much for your time. All right. Okay, stay safe, and we appreciate you guys. Thank y'all. guys our very next guest on the podcast uh, you might remember him from his days on the voice singer songwriter and he says he's not a blues guitarist we'll uh, we'll let him show us uh, his his finger picking a little bit if you will cody Ballou on with us today and first off cody thanks for visiting with us of course thank you for having me and i'm so glad that we're reconnecting after all these years because you know it's one thing to reconnect and not have anything to talk about but it's another <laughs> when shit's going, going well. Yeah. I know. Right. <laughs> now you, you mentioned, uh, we visited, I believe it was 2012 when you That's were on right. the voice. That was the first year I was doing some interviews with the voice and, uh, things have changed a little bit, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I came back home from that to Nashville as soon as we wrapped and just like anybody else that has had, you know, a little bit of success on, on that show. Um, you're left wondering what to do next, you know, because you go from having this massive production behind you to execute your vision for three minutes at a time once a week. And um, when all that goes away, it's a really weird adjustment. Um, it took me a, a while actually to sort of flush all that out of my system and know what was real and what was television. Um, but it was a good, it was a good, um, I guess, crash course for me and to, to understand the uh, process of television and the power of it, what it can do for you if you harness it. Um, so I've taken all these years since then. I, I've not stopped working, obviously, but, um, you know, it's just something that you chip away at and, and you hope and pray that somebody pays attention to what you're doing. and. Um, 2020 was the year. I mean, I know that it represents something totally different to everybody else, but um, I have been lucky. So that's all I can, that's the best way I know how to say it without rubbing everybody's nose in it. <laughs> so, so 2020 for you, what, uh, what, what has been the, the, the bright spot for you? You talk about uh, it being, I mean, everybody's got bright spots this year. I mean, you just have to look a little harder. It seems. Sure. Uh, for me, you know, um, I was telling you earlier, I, I have an upholstery business that I, I run out of my, my home. Um, so I was already suited to working alone, working from home, being distant. Um, the, I did wonder if people would sort of slow down on that type of stuff with the unknowns, but just like yard projects and house projects, people really leaned into that and I've stayed really busy. But then all while that was going on, um, this newish label in, in town, um, their artist at the, their one artist at the time was a uh, Cree Harrison or is Cree Harrison. And, um, they called and wanted to talk. And I was just like, even up until we inked the deal, I was just like, these people have lost their mind. <laughs> <laughs> They're thinking. But, um, so we got started, you know, trying to figure out how to work with this situation instead of against it. And, um, 
I released A Thousand Miles From Nowhere, which is a, a, a Dwight Yoakam song from the 90s, a big hit for him. And I sort of um, slowed it down a little, made it more melancholy to reflect this sort of moment that we're in. Um, and we had a lot of positive feedback from that. And then while that was sort of ramping up, Christmas music was not on the table. Um, I, the power of Instagram, you know, somebody, a random stranger sent me a message about um, discovering my work and, and liking my music and liking my voice. And um, I, f- I figured out that they were um, a writer, director, producer from L.A. who had a couple of, of movie credits for TV and um, all, all already to his name. And so I just said, well, if you're ever looking for somebody with an inescapable Southern draw for a part, let me know. And I said, thank <laughs> Reba McIntyre in Tremors, which is only the best movie ever. ever and uh, he said, well, actually I don't have anything on the, on the docket now, but would you be interested in writing a pitch for a Christmas movie? And I, you know, I'm not going to turn anything down. He said, it's no guarantee, but if you can do it in the next couple of days, cause we're already shooting it would be for this line dancing scene. Um, and if you'll send me a little work tape, I'll send it up the chain. And he sent it. They liked the pitch. They asked, they ordered the, the demo. And um, my producer, Skylar Wilson, and I, we did it. I, I tracked my vocals right in this room. And um, he called in some some other um, talent. One, one person in particular is... Janae Fleener, who is the reigning uh, CMA in- instrumentalist of the year, um, wow. she's a fiddle player, actually from Arkansas. I, all the all the people that I'm learning about from Arkansas now that are on like in the the main current of country music is kind of bizarre. You know, we've got the <laughs> nuclear plant in Russellville, so I just wonder if something's <laughs> in the water over there. But um, anyway, that's for somebody else to to discover. But we we produced this track and sent it over to Viacom uh, just in time. And they didn't have a note. They didn't have a revision. They wanted it just the way that it was. And um, now I'm talking to you about it. It's on the radio everywhere. (laughs) It's premiering on CMT on Friday. It's going to be on one of the jumbo screens in Times Square on Friday, wow. the music video for it. And so it's just like this. And then the movie premieres Sunday. So I, they sent me a, an email uh, last week with all this, like these, each line was some huge monumental good news. And I was just like, <laughs> y'all need to break this up and put it in separate emails. Cause I can't take all this in one go. <laughs> Um, so we've been really, really fortunate. I mean, the song itself is good. I, I, I love the song. I laughed my way through writing it because I just thought if anybody likes it, it's <laughs> out of me. Uh, but you know, it really, um, I'm hoping that it has legs and, and will be one of those that we look back on and go, wow, that thing is around every year and makes him a ton of money. There you go. That's the important part, right? That's the most important part of Christmas. Now, are are you a a Christmas music fan? Are you one that kind of dreads uh, Black Friday for the music? No, I look forward to it. I I I, like in my truck. I listen to the local all day Christmas music channel, and I and I prefer the channels. This one is like. something mix something it's like a genre blend I, mm-hmm. I i like when they'll pull the classics from all the genres because i feel like christmas is the genre it doesn't need to be you know country only or you know uh the beatles only but um i like it all so it was not a difficult task for me to write a christmas song um they the brief was it needs to sound like it goes along with any man of mine, Shania Twain, <laughs> and pour some sugar on me. And so I was just like, well, hell, how am I going to do that? But one of my all-time favorite songs is um, Don't Hand Me No Lines and Keep Your Hands to Yourself. And so that's kind of where I I'm, I felt like, well, that already leans in those directions. So I'm just going to focus on this one. Um, and so... I just sort of sat down and 
Um, for some reason, the song, um, you can leave the light on or you can leave your head on. It's by Joe Cocker. Um, and then the song, um, all my exes live in Texas. That's why I hang my hat in Tennessee. I don't know why that came to my mind, but I just thought you can hang your hat on my Christmas tree. And then the rest, I just sat down and wrote it in one go. So now how long is, is a normal writing process for you? Say, say you get an idea and you, and you sit down is, is it normally a quick write or uh, does it usually require a, a, cu- a few extra settings, if you will? Some of them, I'll say it's 50, 50, like, some of them, my song Crimes that's out, I, I released it last year. You can download that anywhere. But that one was, I wrote it on an airplane in one, one go. Uh, the Christmas song, I wrote it in one go. But then I have others um, that are, some of them are going to come out next year, but that I, that I worked on for months and months and months because I'll come up, if a hook or a, or a, a, line, a turn of phrase uh, won't it just haunts me and haunts me and I can't crack where to take it either backwards or forwards. Uh, I know that it's one that I need to sit with. I don't try to force them. Um, and I do most of my writing by myself, uh, mostly because I just always have, and I always kept a full-time job while I tried to do music because I never could, um, I never could give myself into that idea of being a starving artist and like sleeping on couches and, and living in vans. It just never, I like to have nice shit. So I, I worked (laughs) all the time and that kept me from, um, that kept me from being able to do a lot of day rights, you know, because writers in Nashville, they work all day writing and I was always at, at my own job. Um, so I, I have, I have had some successful co-writes. Um, uh, Rodeo is one that I did with, with Autumn McIntyre, who's got a lot of good hits out right now with, with, with artists. Um, I think we took it down off of, off the streaming services because we're going to release it next year with a bigger bang. When I put it out, it's one of the best songs on my record that's going to come out, but I was independent at the time and, you know, if you ain't got money, then you ain't going anywhere. <laughs> and, and how cool is it now to to have the backing behind you uh, to, for for the new release coming up? It is like I don't know how to describe it to somebody that's not um, in in an artistic uh, in an artist role trying to support your your work. Um, it's, it is a total 180. It's like all the weights lifted the, the, then the, um, before all of the stress and worry is, is anybody going to hear this? Is it going to be seen? But now I shift over to, okay, are these people understanding the vision? How much of this can I delegate when I've done it by myself all, all, all these years, you know, I've, I, every cover of every record I've designed myself, uh, save for a few that some friends helped me with. So even down to picking out fonts, I have trouble relinquishing that. And, um, that was one of the first things that the label really understood. Um, cause some artists don't want to be a part right. of those little details, you know? Um, but for me that they, they tried to do some things to take some of the, some of it off my plate. And then they were like, Oh no, he's going to have to be, <laughs> he's going to have to be a part of this. Cause um, I just have such a clear and, and direct idea of where I want to go. And that's why I like working with them so much because they've really just gotten fully behind whatever I want to do. Um, even down to the music video we just shot for the Christmas song. Um, you know, Santa's pub here in Nashville is an iconic place. I don't know if you've ever, gotten I've never, go. I've never been there, but I, I know where you're talking about. Yeah. It's a double wide trailer over by the fairgrounds. And, um, it's been a bar since the sixties, I think, but nothing to speak of. It was just like a local, a, just a local hang. And then this guy named Santa who 
For all I know, that's his name. That's how he introduces <laughs> himself. That's what everybody calls him. But he bought it and painted Santa's pub, like literally with spray paint on the outside wall, hung some lights up, opened it. He serves beer out of an ice chest. He takes cash only, and it's a karaoke bar where you smoke in there. I mean, the ceilings are this high, and it's this much smoke. A, a little on the and it, it was voted number one bar in the world by GQ magazine, and he's never paid for a single piece of advertising. And so everybody from the Oak Ridge Boys to Lady A have, have done videos somewhere in and around that place. And we just pulled up over there to take pictures out front for the cover of the, the song. Well, he comes out on the porch. I mean, it was during the day. Um, he had been closed since March. He hadn't opened at all. This was going to be the year that he hit his million dollar mark in sales, mm-hmm. which I can't even imagine selling that much beer uh, out of an ice chest. But <laughs> anyway, he shut the doors and didn't open at all. And he was just, ha- I mean, happy to have us there to, to talk to. And, before I knew it, he was in the front seat of this, whatever, this Buick Oldsmobile, whatever this car is. I don't, I don't <laughs> even know. Um, and he's driving the car, and I'm in the back seat. And then jumped to um, a few weeks ago, we he opened the place up just for us to have, like, we created a COVID village, and everybody was tested right before we went in. Um, and we just created Santa's Pub um, and had this – party in there at this um ugly christmas sweater party because that's referenced in the song and um did a line dance out in the parking lot and i just this this whole thing has blown my mind wide open for sure <laughs> that's pretty awesome now uh you, you've you've been leaning on the guitar there and i and i said we yeah. were going to test if you were a uh, a blues guitarist I, you're probably not going to try to test that are you no, what I'm going to do is when it comes to the little solo section, I'm just going to do it like a kazoo. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, is what? that something that you want me to do now? Are you ready? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so this, for the folks listening, try not to. it, it might be best if y'all just go ahead and pull over if you're driving because I don't <laughs> want you to wreck your car. Um, this is Hang Your Hat on My Christmas Tree, the one and only acoustic version coming to you right now on the podcast. Who the hell is calling? <laughs> did that come through on your end? That did not. Oh my God, it was like a siren. Let me turn this off. Everybody pause. This is how you do things when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> I thought I was the only one that did it. Airplane mode. Okay, here we go. Every creature is stirring that the party hop. Popping all the bottles, drinking every last drop. The drummers are drumming, pipers get in line. Just a Jack Frost shout, y'all, it's boring time. Maybe it's the end, no, I'm talking, but I gotta tell the truth. The ugly Christmas sweater showed us good on you. Call me Mr. Mr. Tom, handing kisses out for free. You can hang your hat on my Christmas tree. Hang your hat on my Christmas tree. Not in the eyes, your secret Santa said to me. Till the rain can come and knock and we ain't got no place to be. You can hang your hat. Christmas tree. I just saw Donald and Vixen stepping out the air. Tiny Tim is DJing by the chimney with care. Mrs. Claus is sidestepping with her candy cane. You know that old saint, Nicky calls her sweet Lorraine. You got my head spinning like a cable top. This is my night before Christmas. I don't ever want to stop. Go ahead and make the gingerbread. Acoustic version, the only place you're going to find it. 
Yep, that's the only place it's going to live, right there. <laughs> it's going to be worth something, I think. We can only hope, right? <laughs> Now, now, Cody, if folks want to find out not only uh, about the Christmas single, the upcoming music, uh, tour schedule, uh, live dates, all that kind of stuff, where's uh, where's the best place? I think the best place right this second would be uh, my Instagram, which is at Cody Ballou, um, and then Facebook, which is facebook.com slash Cody Ballou. We really keep everything up to date there. Um, my website is really just a holding place right now. You can go there and look at a really pretty picture if you want. But <laughs> Instagram and Facebook are the ones places where, um, like I'm about to, uh, we're going to release a lyric video tomorrow that a great illustrator in, in Morocco put together, which is going to be wow. cool. Um, so there's a lot of stuff coming out that, um, is just, you know, super cool. I, I don't, I, I can't even put it into words how crazy this, this time is. Well, that is, and that we're, we're nearly 10 years of knowing each other. I know, I know it's, and, and it's been that long since we talked, so we can't make it, we, we got to make it shorter next time. That's right. You'll have, you'll have 15 dogs by the way. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then, Hey, they've been good today. They have been good. I hadn't heard Pete. I know I'm, I'm going to have to go check on them though. I'm sure. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, Cody, it's been great to visit with you, man. And, uh, thank you for your time and, uh, let's not make it eight years next time. I call me anytime. I'm happy to talk. Clearly, I'll talk all day. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Cody, thank you for your time, brother. You're welcome. Have a good day. Again, thanks for joining us for this episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you ever have a comment, question, or anything else you'd like to know, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, all at GQ with Cam. If you'd like to help out in the funding for this podcast, feel free to click the support tab and follow the instructions. If you have a special guest idea, email me, gqwithcam at gmail.com. Again, thanks to our friend Brandon Allen for coming up with the theme music. I'm going to let him play a little extra for you as we wrap up the show today. We'll be back with a special Wednesday episode coming up tomorrow, including country Christian artist Zach Williams. Zach Williams.